Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the top 10 announcements that were made at the Power Platform Conference last week at Orlando, Florida, USA. Now these 10 are not in any specific order, but these are the 10 that I believe were the big announcements that really caught my attention, and so I wanna share them with you. So stick around, these are pretty important. But first, here's my intro video. So the Power Platform Conference was actually last week from September 20th to the 22nd and two days before there was a workshop and then one days after there was another workshop. And this was a sold out event. There were 3,500 people who attended this conference and it was spectacular. In fact, they've actually already decided to make plans for that next year, but I'll share that with you shortly. So here you go. Here are the 10 of what I think were the big announcements and let's get started. All right, so the first one that I wanna talk about, which caught my attention, was the co-authoring in Power Apps. In fact, this was talked about in the keynote by Charles Lamano. And as the name suggests, yes, you will now be able to do co-authoring in Power Apps. And this is very similar to how we can do that in Office 365. You know, when we go into Excel, we can go into PowerPoint, we can do co-authoring over there. Um, same thing can be done over here as well. And so if you look at the screenshot over here, it actually shows you a couple of things. On the left side over there, it actually tells you that, hey, inside the app, there's icons of people's profiles, and that's where they are able to go in and see where this person is actually doing what, or specifically where this person is. So for example, you can see that one person is actually in this one page, while the other person is in another page. And this really will improve the overall collaboration functionality and speed up the process, because then you can actually work on the app together, and you can even review the app together. And that was personally one of my favorites is the co-authoring in the Power Apps. Next was the building of the cards for Power Apps. Now the cards for Power Apps is actually based on the same adaptive card framework, but now you can do it with a low code functionality over here. So take a look at this actual display that's already built. How using Power Apps, instead of you building a full canvas app, you can now very specifically build just a card section of Power Apps. And you still have the same full fidelity. You can go ahead and add all of these controls in, you can go ahead and do even the responsive design, see example over here, buttons are added, all of these formulas are really added, you've got the advanced functionality over there, on the top you've got the formula bar, all of this can be done, you can even do a play of a preview just to see how it works. And then after everything is all said and done, after you've done the demo over here, you know, you've actually ver verified that it is dynamic, what you can do is actually go ahead and copy the link, and that link, you can actually go ahead and paste that directly inside Teams. And then it's interesting because as you can see over here, we've gone ahead and now copied the link, and then we're gonna go now inside our Teams, and inside our Teams, when you go in, you basically paste the URL and the URL will dynamically go ahead and get converted inside what looks like the card and all the authentication and everything goes inside it. So I really like this functionality for that one big reason because before you actually had to do it with the adaptive card framework which required a lot of coding functionality but now I can actually build the UI and the UX experience as if I was building a canvas app and directly go ahead and test that just by getting the URL. I'm looking forward to this one. All right, so the next one I wanna talk about is the maker matching with an integrated virtual agent in Power Apps. As we know, all of us are actually learning and growing into Power Apps, and over the period of time, some of them may have had the experience to go and do advisory. You know, I've actually done something similar like this, we used to call it as peer review, where someone who's been a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more well-versed in the company, will be more well-versed in the program, they can actually go ahead and now assist other people. So right over here now, they're making the assistance process a little bit more easier, they're gonna go and factor in virtual agents such that if somebody is having a little bit of a problem, um, they can now go ahead and find an advisor of Power Apps with that skill set directly inside using uh, this virtual agent assistance. And then they can tell, hey, for something like this, go ahead and bring this person. And then you can directly go ahead and do that inside Teams, get the assistance that you need. And again, this whole concept of Power Apps and the community is now directly put inside Power Canvas app as well using the virtual agent technology. This is gonna be a really interesting thing and it really help at a company level to go ahead and do some peer reviewing, to do some peer assistance, to really go and take that skill set and improve the people over the period of time. All right, so the number four was also a big one. It's the SAP connectors and templates. Now, as we have known, there are all these delegatable connectors that have grown big and popular. 
Well, SAP is actually now in the same league over there because not only does it come up as a connector and all its templates, but it has pre-built power apps and power automates, which are the common use cases for the SAP connectors and processes. So the example that I have over here is how we can actually go ahead and get all of these templates already built specifically for the table level, for the apps level, and then how you also have it for the power automate. You've got all the connectors and the actions over there, but you've also got templates already available to go ahead and make those advanced SAP system connections. That is actually pretty neat, and I know that the, it definitely caught the audience attention on that one. So number five is the automation COE toolkit. A good way to talk about that is actually go to the website, which goes and describes a lot about it. So the introducing the power automation toolkit for the power platform has actually announced all here on September 20. And this is when it actually was officially there. And I like the way it talks about it. it says to establish a successful automation culture, you typically need to build an automation center of excellence. So when I was actually reading through all of this, it really talks about the use of using a robotic automation process over here. So there's a lot of power apps and power automate flows directly that built into it. Uh, more of this information is to come as you can actually start playing around with it. So I highly recommend that you take a look at this link, which I put in the description below. But this is currently also released in the private preview version of the automation kit, previously known as automation COE starter kit. That's the important thing that previously this was known as the automation COE starter kit. This is now just going to be renamed as an automation kit and more information on that to come. And if you're interested, I put the link below, read more about that. Number six, it's Power App Program for Career Switchers. And the whole concept over there, which is to learn at your own space, learn at your own pace, uh, receive the recognition, and be part of the growing community. My personal favorite was how they went and put the video of Matthew up away there. And he was actually talking, and one of the, the ones which actually was hilarious is he said that, I didn't even know such a term as power platform developer exists over there. And you know, the audience actually laughed and giggled about that, but there is some fact to it, is that someone like Matthew has actually changed his entire career from an accounting standpoint to becoming a power platform developer. And, and he was very clear in mentioning that his accounting career was actually pretty good, but because he got so good at being a power platform developer, he was able to switch his careers and now has been so success, successful over there. So major kudos to Matthew. I love that how they were able to use him as an example, but this was another big one, is that the Power App program for career switchers, because people can actually now switch careers coming from whichever background that they have, a non-technical background, they can switch into technology, which is the Power Platform. Now, some of the following ones which I'm gonna show you were not openly announced in keynotes, but it was important that you attended a few of the sessions, because over there, they dropped a whole bunch of nuggets over here. So for example, in this item number seven, new features and improvements were talked about. And some of the big ones are really large is that larger canvas apps through partitioning, then offline dataverse data was another big one, improving web deep linking, um, in-app notifications is another big one over there, and then easily switching between apps in web. So going ahead and doing some heavy deep linking, those were some of the important ones. And then finally, the one I just wanna call out is the global search for dataverse data. Again, these are all big ones. Some of these actually resonate with y'all because you've been building these apps for a while. And all of these were actually lined up very well for new features and improvements that are coming up. And in the same breath, this was another one which was introduced again in a session. And if you can see over here, this is the native export to PDF. In fact, while they were talking about this, they knew that there was such a heavy importance, such a high request, almost a number one request to be able to go ahead and print PDF or convert to PDF for all the gallery data that you might have gone ahead and registered or created in your Power Apps. Well, now they will actually have a PDF function to go and do this. And as you can see in that slide below, there is now a PDF formula. That's where you'll be able to go and create that. So this is currently still in the planning stage. They did go ahead and demo this. In fact, in the URL, you could see that it was, it was a, a preview tenant that they were working on, but they've actually gone ahead and announced this in this event, which means you're already working on it. They heard us. They know that this was one of the number one asks to actually automatically transfer that into a PDF. So I personally am very excited about this, and I'm so glad that the product group heard all the requests that we as community members give them. Number nine, more enhancements. And I kind of kept this a little separate from number seven because these announcements are kind of on the roadmap. So for example, the coming soon one over there, export to PDF, we just talked about that. But in the future is the responsive layout container authoring improvements. 
Now, you and I know that building responsive ads can sometimes be a little bit of a challenging. Yeah, they've got containers and everything that we can do, but they have actually already put that on the timeline. So I'm really excited about that. In fact, if you take one step left on, to the left, which is the up next, right over there, they said they're already gonna start improving the responsive and it'll come out in the preview and they're gonna constantly go ahead and actually improve more on that. Already on the recent side, which means the one that they're gonna be releasing more soon over there, they'll have more table designer in Power Apps and support virtual agents in Canvas. Now we had heard about this, I personally have heard about this, that they are already going to work on taking the Power Virtual Agents and directly embedding that into a Power Apps Canvas app. Currently, that is not possible. In fact, there is some workarounds, but it's very tedious. You run into authentication problems. But if they go ahead and build this solution directly, for example, how we're able to take Power BI and embed that into Power Apps, something similar. We'll be able to take the Power Virtual Agent chatbot and directly embed in that into a Canvas app. Same type of functionality. What I like is that that's already on the recent, which means that it's gonna be very close to the releasing thing. But here are the other things which are coming soon, up next, and future plannings. And finally, they have already announced the fall of 2023, which is gonna be the next Microsoft Power Platform Conference. Now they set fall, so it should be around the same time as this over here, but the big announcement that this is going to be in the Las Vegas in the MGM Grand. Now MGM is also the same place where we've got the Microsoft Collaborations Conference over there, the entire 365 and Teams and everything. It's gonna be the same conference center and that's where they have the Power Platform Conference. But what I like is I know for a fact that that place is huge, which means it'll be able to handle more people, higher capacity. And like I said, there was already 3,500 people for the 2020 year, the one that was last week, and that was sold out because that was the capacity of that place. So now that they know that, hey, this was very successful in 2022, in 2023, they've got to go bigger, better, and stronger. Putting it in the MGM Grand in Las Vegas is the ultimate place because it's going to grow. And I personally am highly looking forward to this one. And there you have it. These are the 10 announcements, again, that I think were big and that were made at the Power Platform Conference last week. So keep a lookout for these ones as they'll slowly start either come out in your tenant or you might see them in the preview environments, but you should start seeing them soon. So hopefully this was helpful to you. And as always, keep using Power Platform. Hey everyone, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.